<laughs> now again comes radio's strangest adventurer, The Shadow. Mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today on the air, Blue Coal brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, Hounds in the Hills. In just a moment, the shadow's exciting adventure will begin. Meanwhile, I have an important message for everybody. We are now in the midst of the most treacherous season of the entire year. But you can protect your family's health during this danger period by burning blue coal. For blue coal gives you clean, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. And its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when you order fuel, insist on blue coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. High in the pine-clad hills of North Carolina, where backwoods living is neighbor to palatial winter homes, there is a haunted mansion. Relic of former grandeur. With no visible means of support, old Sadie, haggard, half-demented creature, and Jake, a hunchback son, live in one wing of the dilapidated old house. A pack of great, vicious, crossbreed hounds guards the old place from intruders. It is early evening. In the dim half-light, two figures, led by one of the hounds, approach the house. vacation in North Carolina does feel, especially when you're the host, Mr. Rupert. <laughs> I thought you were always on vacations, Lamont. I've never heard of you doing anything except dabbling in that mysterious laboratory of yours. Yes, yeah, just a playboy. <laughs> yes, I just dabble. A little science, a little chemistry, a little psychology. I just dabble. <laughs> Someone's calling you, Gary. It's been a hurry. Well, it's the sheriff. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. Perhaps he saw you drive, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rupert. Yeah? Uh, sorry to bother you. Well, what is it, Sheriff? Another child's lost. Gone over the cliff at the border trail. What? Another one? Yes, sir. Little Dickie Nelson this time. Oh, good Lord, Sheriff. This is horrible. Child lost? Is, is that what you said, Sheriff? Yes, sir. A fourth in less than two weeks. Lost? Lost how? On the border trail over the cliff there. Oh, that's awful. Well, what is this trail, Gary? Well, it's a narrow pathway along the rim of a high cliff. It washes out so that a slip on the gravel starts to slide right over the cliff. And you mean to say four boys have been lost there in two weeks? 
Yes? Four? Yes, but doesn't it strike you there might be something more than just fate causing the disappearance of these children? Well, but what? That I don't know. Gary, I'd like to look at this clip. <laughs> See how the trail washes out down the cliff? Yes, yes. That's a thousand feet straight down there. It's the river at the bottom. Yeah. I reckon the current must carry the bodies away. We haven't found a trace of them. I don't suppose there's any doubt about what happened to the boys. No, Miss Lynn. When Bobby Mina disappeared last week, we found a ball he'd been playing with. Would you call that conclusive evidence? Well, this morning we snared up Dickie Nelson's cap that was caught on some shrubbery part way down the mountain. Mm. Of course, some of the colored folk around here think ghost done it. Ghost? Yeah. See, they were howling last night about the time Dickie was lost here. What kind of howling, Sheriff? Darned if I know, sir. They say they heard it the three times the other boys were lost. But you know how they are. Colored folks up here in the hills is superstitious. Yes. But what kind of a howl does a ghost make in this part of the country, Sheriff? Well, that's what I asked. About near they could describe it, it was like a dog howling. Hound dog. Well, I've generally found that a dog howling means a dog. Perhaps I'd better reverse the usual procedure, the dog trailing a man. It's all very mysterious, Lamont. Yes, it is, Margot. Will you excuse me for a moment, Sheriff? Yes, yeah, certainly, Mr. Cranston. Margot, I think the shadow will look into this mystery. But how? Go back to the house, Margot. I'll wireless you if I need help. In my invisible state as the shadow, I'm going to follow the clue of the dog's. Let's see where it leads me. <laughs> I want to go home. Don't cry, Dickie. Don't cry. Hmm? What's that? Who are you? I've come here to help you. You're Dickie Nelson, aren't you? Yes, sir, but... Who are you? It's so dark I can't see you. You don't need to see me, Dickie. Pretend I'm just a shadow. But you can hear me. Yes, sir, but I want to go home. Here, here, you've got to be a man, Dickie. I'll try to get you home. But you've got to stop crying and help me. I'm scared, that's why. Haven't you got a handkerchief? No, sir. Here, use my handkerchief. Thank you. Now dry your eyes and wipe your nose. I want you to tell me something. Yes, sir. Are there any other boys here? Yes, sir, three of them. How did you get here? I believed a ghost story, Dickie. And I looked for a ghost who howled like a hound. And then I just walked. But I didn't find a ghost. I'll find what I expected to find. A dog. In fact, lots of them. Didn't they see you? No. Didn't old Sadie or Jake see you? No, it's dark in here. But even with the light on, people can't see me because I've learned how to make them think they don't see me. I blind their eyes to me. How? Never mind how. You must believe it and don't be afraid of me. I'm your friend. Yes, sir. Trust me, Dickie. Perhaps I can find a way to get you and the other boys out of... Quiet. Somebody coming. Sheriff well, finds these kids here, they'll hang us, you crazy old fool. Jake, now don't you touch my baby. He's my Jakey. Uh, he's you before you came a hunchback. If you kill him, you'll be killing yourself. He's you, Jake. You keep away from me. Don't you touch me. Jake, don't touch that boy. Who's that? I hear it too. Give me that lamp. I hear it too, Jake. Uh, nobody's in here but us. Us and the kid. He got out. No, I'm still here. Mr. Boyce, hmm? ain't nobody with us. Well, I hear it too. Well, that's nothing, Jake. I'm always hearing voices. <laughs> and now you're hearing them. Now oh, we're both crazy. <laughs> uh, reckon it ain't so crazy a voice can scare me. If I'm crazy like you, then voices ain't real. Now put this kid out of the way, no. and then I'll get the others. No, no, stop. Please don't hit me with that stick. No, 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 Put Jake. Put down that stick, Jake. Put it down. Now. 
I ain't scared of voices in Adriel. I said drop it. Uh, who hit me? Look. Huh? Look at that place on my wrist. Look. <laughs> well, Dick, I've been hearing voices for a long time, but I ain't never been hit by one. You done it. Oh, I did not. I wasn't near you. Then it was the kid. I never moved. Well, then who? I hit you, Jake. Now I'm going to give you a chance to save yourself. Let this boy go. Bring the other boys here. I'll take them home. No, no, they're mine. They're mine. They're Dickie. No, I'll get rid of them my way. Please help me. I want to go home. Trust me, Dickie. There's only one thing for me to do now. Jake, this is your last chance. Right. Who's that? Uh, you reckon it's somebody looking for the kids? After this? Jake, it must be them. The Duke and Slim coming to hide out. Ah, uh, listen. Yeah. It's him. Oh, Jake, he'll kill us both if he knows about my baby. Well, what he don't know won't hurt him. Shut the door to the kids' room and lock it. Yeah, hurry up, Jake, let him in. But don't say a word about my baby. Don't worry. Yeah. Maybe I'm crazy, too, but I ain't that crazy. Well, what took you so long, Jake? Well, I do. Come in, Slim. Hurry up. Shut the door. Okay, Duke. Yeah, what a dump this is. It's better than being in jail up north. If we didn't have this hideout, that's where you'd be. Oh, hello, old Sadie. Uh, come in, Duke. <laughs> I'll slap to you again. Shut up. That half-witted old Dane talks too much. Hey, you staying for a while, Duke? What's it to you? I don't care. Oh, lay off the guy, Slim. Jake, and you too, old Sadie. Yeah? We're taking a little rest away from the cops. See? Turn the dogs loose in the yard around the house so they can chew up anybody that comes here looking for us. Go on, Jake. Do it now. All right, Duke. Just a minute, Jake. Who's that? Somebody's in here, Duke. <laughs> the voice again, Jake. <laughs> they can't hear it unless they're crazy, too. <laughs> that voice again. Yes, Jake, that same voice. And the Duke can hear it, too. Can't you, Duke? Say, hey, what's going on here? Who is that? I tell you, it's in here, Duke. Who's playing tricks on me? Duke, did you ever hear of the shadow? The shadow? I have, Duke. I know, that's the guy that talks to you, but you can't see him. Shut up, you fool. Yes, yeah, Shadow. I've heard about you. I never believed what I heard, though. You can believe it now. Listen, Duke. I'm here for only one purpose. To save the lives of four little children. Oh, don't believe him. It's a lie. Shut up. I'm handling this. Go ahead, Shadow. Go ahead. Talk some more. All right. Old Sadie and Jake there have put you in a tough spot. How, Shadow? Old Sadie is crazy. She's, well, shall we say, borrowed four little boys from places near here and made it appear that they were killed. Killed, falling over a cliff. Oh, it's a lie. They was killed. I killed them and my dicky took their place. Duke, the old dame is back. Shut up. Jake here is almost as crazy as his mother, but he wants to kill the boys. Uh. Don't believe him, Duke. Either way, you'll be arrested for kidnapping. Hey, Duke, we don't want no part in kidnapping. Well, Shadow, what's the proposition? If you let me take the boys away back to their homes, you won't be accused of kidnapping. And give you a chance to tip off the police to where we're hiding out? <laughs> oh, no. Let him have it, Slim. <laughs> Look, Duke, the door. He went out the door. He's gone, Duke. He's gone. We can't get him now. Oh, yes, we can. How? Ah, the dog. <laughs> If the shadow's a man, them dogs can follow his scent. <laughs> if the shadow is a man, you mean the dogs will trail him by his scent even though we can't see him? She's right, Duke. But we haven't got anything to give the dogs to smell to give them the scent. <laughs> Maybe he left something in the kid's room. Let's go and see. Yeah. Come on, let's, let's see. Yeah, let's, let's look around here. Ah, he's too clever to have left anything behind. Hey. Where'd the boy get that handkerchief he's sniffling into? Handkerchief, huh? Yeah. He never had no handkerchief when he come here. Uh, who gave you this handkerchief, little boy? A man. What man? A man who spoke to me in the dark. You couldn't see him? No. He said I had to believe he was here, although I couldn't see him. <laughs> then it's the shadows. Get the dogs. Get the dogs. They can get his scent from that handkerchief and trail him. The shadow can't escape this time. Shadow's adventure continues in just a moment. Meanwhile, I'd like to say a few words about a subject that's uppermost in everyone's mind these days, how to save money. Large savings in cooking and heating costs can be made by switching to blue coal. For blue coal is the perfect home fuel. 
It is the best grade of Pennsylvania anthracite. And anthracite is the fuel that furnaces, cooking stoves, and parlor heaters in New England were designed to use. Blue coal gives off a steady, clean heat. It lasts longer and burns down to a fine, powdery ash without giving off smoke or grime common to many other fuels. Blue coal's cleanliness will appeal to New England housewives. For housekeeping is greatly simplified when blue coal is used because with this dependable fuel, you not only have a more comfortable home, but a cleaner house inside and out. These are the reasons why blue coal is so popular in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Sales in Pawtucket this winter are 12% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. Here's another point. You buy American when buying blue coal. It is mined and prepared in Pennsylvania by the Glen Alden Coal Company, especially for home use. So for economy and cleanliness, start using blue coal tomorrow. Order it by name. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. You'll find him listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. two things for the shadow to do. Stand and be chewed by them beasts or else climb a tree. He's not invisible to a dog's nose. They can smell him. If he's climbed a tree, we got him, Duke. Hey, there's the dog jump around that tree. Right there. See him? Well, what do we do now? Well, we can't do much while it's dark. What do you mean? I mean we gotta keep the shadow treed until it's daylight. Yeah, but you can't see him whether it's light or dark. That's right. Maybe he's beating us after all. Listen. If we wait till daylight, then we can see where he is in the tree. But you can't see where he is. Yeah, but when he comes, he has to shake the branch he's sitting on. And when we see any of them leaves shaking, we'll shoot right at that place. It'll be like shooting at nothing. I know. Hey, if we don't get him that way, he has two other things to choose from. Yeah, what's that? We can keep him treed until he gets so weak he can't work his invisibility gag anymore. And he comes down. And then the dogs get him. Well, there's nothing to do but wait till morning, then. No, but we got to keep awake. Morning ain't far off, and then we'll see. <laughs> hey, Duke, I got to thinking, sitting here last night, what about them kids? Well, Slim, what about them? We didn't do it, but they can pin a kidnapping rap on us. Not without evidence, Slim. No, but she... Oh, I get it. No evidence, huh? That's right. No kids. What do you think? Yeah. Jake here don't want no evidence either. As soon as we dispose of the man who calls himself the shadow, no one will know. And then Jake here gets rid of the kids. That's right. Yeah, but how about Jake and old Sadie? I think they could uh, disappear and not be missed. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Hey, Duke, look. We can see the whole tree now. But I don't see nobody. No, of course not. But he's there. Now watch carefully, Slim. There's no wind. Any limb or branch that moves may be the shadow. Yeah. So when something moves, let him have it. I get it. Hey, but how do we know when we get him? He'll come down, Slim. <laughs> now you miss, Slim. Take your time. Hey, what's that? I thought I saw a branch move. We're shooting at the shadow, Jake. And when he's unconscious or dead, 
We can see them all right. And then... <laughs> you didn't do so good yourself, Duke. Uh, those dogs are hungry. Yeah. I bet they look nice from up in the tree, waiting for their breakfast. How can you shoot him if you can't see him? Shut up, Jake. Now, take your time, Slim. Good morning, Duke. He's there. Good morning, Shadow. I hope you slept well. Oh, yeah. And you? Now, watch closely. Yeah, yeah. Would it be too much for me to ask, how are the little boys? They're all right, Shadow. So far. That's good. Yeah, but I'll get rid of them. Slim, get around the other side of the tree. I think he's low in the tree, behind the trunk. Okay, Duke. We're taking care of you first, Shadow. You know too much. <laughs> well, what's funny, Shadow? I'm laughing at you, Duke. Oh, yeah? You laugh different when I get my hands on you. Why don't you come up here and try it? I don't have to. You'll come down. You'll have a long wait. Oh, yeah? Can't you say anything but, oh, yeah? You're really quite stupid, Duke. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm smart enough to get you out of that tree. Good. I was getting rather bored. Ah, oh, shut up. Hey, Slim. Go back to the house and get an axe. This tree ain't too big to cut down. Very ingenious. Yeah, but the dogs. It ain't safe to leave without Jake. The dogs, they won't touch you. They're mm -hmm. after the shadow. And Jake will keep them here. Sure, sure. I'll keep them here, sure. And hurry back, Slim. Now, scram. Okay, Duke. But don't let them dogs come after me. Jake will keep the dogs here. Okay, watch it. Now, now hurry back, Slim. <laughs> Hey, Jake, call the dogs off. They're going after Slim. Hey, they don't like him. They call him back. Slim, look out. Jake, the dogs are attacking him. Yeah, they're going to eat him. I'll shoot him, Slim. Ah, guess you, you didn't shoot him soon enough, Duke. Well, Jake, your dogs got Slim. I'm afraid you've lost most of them. Yeah. Ma will be awful mad. There's only Big Tom left. But the Duke will shoot him. No, he won't. His gun's empty. Look at him go up that tree. Yeah. Big Tom didn't get him. Now you're both up in the tree, ain't you? No, Jake. I'm standing right here behind you. Now do what I tell you. Go over to that tree and tie Big Tom to it. So that the Duke can't get down. Why should I? You want to get those kids out of the way, don't you? Duke won't let you. Yeah. He won't, maybe. Yeah, he won't let me, maybe. Hey, I want to tell him what I'm going to do. Jake, call off this dog. Tie him up, do you hear me? Tie him up. No, not to my tree, you dope. Take him away. Listen to me. Don't tie him there, you half-wit. Well, Duke, we change places. I'll get you if it's the last thing I do, Shadow. You're going to have plenty to do before we meet again. Jake, come back here. Yeah. You'll I'm have there. plenty of time to think about that. Here are some men that may help you out. Who are they? Uh, my Lord, what happened here? I don't know, Sheriff. Say, this is the hunchback, Jake. Hello, Jake. Duke's up in the tree. Yeah, sit down, Sheriff. I got him. Reckon that dog won't attack anyone else. You killed him! Now, if our friend will come down out of the tree, I'll be delighted to put a pair of handcuffs onto him. I've been looking for him and his partner for some time. From the looks of things, I won't need to put the cuffs on his partner. Well, Marco, you better go back to the cars. All right. Yes, I think I will. I, I only wanted to see if... Yes, I'll go back. All right, men. Let's take him away. Marco. Marco. Oh, Oh, Lamont. Lamont, are you all right? Yes, but don't speak my name here. Darling, I was so frightened when I got your wireless message. I, I thought it was the end. So did I. Are the boys all right? Yes, all the boys are safe. They've been taken into town. The deputy sheriff took old Sadie along. Dickie Nelson is in one of the cars up the road waiting. Oh, Lamont, I feel so sorry for that poor old woman. So do I, Margot. She's demented. We must see that she's placed in an institution, not a prison. A place where she can satisfy her mother love mania with dolls. Instead of other people's children. Go to the car, Margot. I'll meet you there. What are we waiting for, Miss Lane? 
I want to go home to my mother. Just a minute, Dickie. I'm expecting someone. Who? Oh, here he comes now. Hello, Margot. Hello, Lamont. Who is this young man? This is Dickie Nelson. Dickie Lamont Cranston. Hello, Mr. Cranston. <laughs> well, Dickie, I hear you had quite an adventure last night. Yes. A kind man came to my room at that terrible house. But I couldn't see him. Well, maybe you dreamt it, Dickie. Supposing we keep it a secret. Just between us three. Yes, I think that's a good idea. All right. But it was a swell dream. <laughs> And here is John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with some interesting information for you. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. The health and comfort of your family during this period of widely varying temperatures depends to a great extent on whether your heating plant delivers steady, even heat when you need it. And the efficiency of your heating plant depends upon the proper use of furnace dampers. Here are some helpful hints on the proper use of these dampers. First, the turn or the smoke pipe damper should never be used for day-to-day -day control of heat. This damper should always be kept as nearly closed as possible without retarding the free burning of your fire. If you do not have automatic thermostat control of your furnace, the everyday control of heat should be left to your check damper, that flap-like damper located on your chimney pipe and the ash pipe damper. To get more heat through your house, close the check damper and open the ash pit damper. Always remember, when one is closed, the other should be open. If the house is warm enough, close the ash pit and open the check damper. The proper location of these dampers is important. The check damper should be between the chimney and turn damper, the latter being between the check damper and the furnace. If the dampers are in this position, they are properly placed. And if operated in the manner that I have just explained, you should not experience any trouble in maintaining an even temperature in all parts of your home. However, if you do have trouble with your furnace, phone your nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to send a John Barclay serviceman to your home. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, take Mr. Barclay's tip. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. Have him send a John Barclay serviceman to your home tomorrow. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen. And be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. Mm -hmm.